In this video, I'm going to explain the principal-agent relationship. What is a principal-agent relationship? The best way to describe this is through an example. Max Sold is an online auction site that connects sellers and buyers. Sellers can post their items for sale on the site. The items are usually posted for a week so that the buyers can bid on the items. Buyers bid up the price until the auction is closed. Bids are entered into Max Sold's online portal. When the auction closes, Max Sold collects the cash from the buyers on the seller's behalf. The buyers then go to the seller's location, usually their home, and collect the items they bought. Max Sold then deducts their fees, which is 30% of the selling price, from the sales price paid by the customer and remits the remaining cash, 70%, to the sellers. For example, Say a seller bought a desk for $25 and they placed it for sale on Max Sold's site. It sells for $100. Max Sold will collect the $100 from the buyer, keep $30 and remit $70 to the seller. If the buyer has a problem with the seller, then Max Sold is the one who deals with the customer, making sure the seller does what they promise to do, which in this case is to provide the desk in the condition shown on the auction to the buyer. This is called a principal-agent relationship. In this case, the seller posting on Max Sold is the principal. They decide on the products to sell, they decide on the price, and they have the inventory risk in that they're responsible for the inventory during the time that the item is posted. This means that the seller's performance obligation is to provide the good or services in other examples to the customer. Max Sold is the agent. They're working on behalf of the principal and their performance obligation is to ensure that the principal provides the goods or services in other examples to the buyer, the customer. Since Max Sold is an agent, what should they record as revenue? There are two possible answers. Max Sold could use the gross method or the net method. The gross method is the total amount of revenue before any deductions for related expenses. If Max Sold uses the gross method, they would record the following, a debit to cash and a credit to revenue for $100. This is the amount of the revenue before any deductions for related expenses, the amount they receive from the buyer of the auction item. At the same time, they would record the expenses separately. A debit to expense of $70. This debit is because the cost to Max Sold of earning the revenue is the $70 they have to remit to the seller. The credit is to accounts payable or cash. This is the credit for accounts payable if they have to still give the money to the seller or cash if they've already paid the seller. If you look at the income statement, they would record revenue of $100, expenses of $70, with income of $30, which of course is their fee. What's the alternative? The alternative is to report the net amount, the amount net of any direct costs. In this case, Max Sold would record a debit to cash of $100, which is the amount of money they receive from the buyer a credit to accounts payable or cash, which is the amount that they either have to pay to the seller or they already paid to the seller, and then a credit to commission revenue for $30, which is the amount of the fee they earned from acting as the agent. If you look at the income statement, the outcome of this would be revenues of $30, expenses of zero, which would result in income of $30, which is their fee. Which is the correct method to record revenue when an entity is acting as an agent? And the answer is the net method. Why? Because Max Sold has no control over the actual inventory item, so they have no right to report 100% of the selling price for that sale, in this case $100. It's also because Max Sold has no control over the price that the item is sold for. That's controlled by the seller. Another fact is that Max Sold earns only the commission, so that's the only portion they should recognize as revenue. And finally, Max Sold does not take any credit risk. If the buyer doesn't pay the $100, Max Sold simply does not pay the seller. The risk of non-payment by the buyer, which is the credit risk, is borne totally by the seller. If the buyer does not pay, the seller is out of pocket the $100, not Max Sold. 
If an entity is acting as an agent, they must use the net method to record the sale. An agent is never permitted to use the gross method to record revenue. Never. Remember that there are four indicators that an entity is acting as an agent. No inventory risk, can't change the price, earns only the commission, and has no credit risk. You'll have to remember these indicators in a test or exam because you have to be able to recognize which entity is the agent and which is the principal. Now, how should a principal record their revenue? If an entity is acting as the principal, they must use the gross method to record the sale. Let's go back to our example. Remember that the seller is the principal. They have the inventory risk, they set the price, and they take the credit risk. They bought the desk for $25 and then sold it on Max Sold's site for $100 to a customer, receiving $70 from Max Sold. How should the seller, the principal, record the revenue? The seller would debit cash for $70, which they received from Max Sold. They would debit the commission expense for the $30 commission that Max Sold kept, and then they would credit revenue for the full $100, the total amount of the revenue before any deductions. They would then also record a debit to cost of goods sold, the $25 that they paid for the desk and a credit to inventory for the same amount, reducing their inventory because the desk is now gone. On their income statement, they would show revenue of $100, less expenses of $55, the total of the $30 commission expense and the $25 cost of goods sold, which is also an expense. They would therefore claim income of $45. So, an entity which is a principal must use the gross method recording revenue before any related expenses, and an entity which is an agent must use the net method recording revenue net of any direct costs. That's it for the principal-agent relationship. As always, thanks so much for watching.